Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. This series of videos is based on the advanced information released by the exam boards ready for the 2022 GCSE exam papers. This advanced information gives detailed information about what will be appearing on each of the three papers and will help you focus your revision on the topics that will definitely be coming up. It requires a bit of interpretation and knowledge of the syllabus. So in these videos, I'll be summarising this information for you, telling you exactly what topics you need to be revising for each paper. I'll also be drawing on my experience of previous papers to give you my best guess for the type of questions you might expect. I think it'll be well worth your time watching it all the way through. If you're not yet subscribed, why not do that now and hit the bell so you'll be notified when these and other resources are uploaded. Now, if you find this video helpful, please do give it a like. This really helps me out. Also, why not share the video with your teacher and your friends, as I'm sure they will also find it useful. Let's get into it. Welcome along to part two of my review of the advanced information released by OCR ahead of this year's GCSE exams. Today we're going to be reviewing the content for paper five, which is the higher tier second paper. It's the non-calculator paper. Just a reminder of how to use this video. Watch the video through first. I'm going to go run through every topic that's going to come up on the paper. Once I've done that, below the video you'll find a whole bunch of links to example questions matching up with those topics. So these are my best guess of the type of question that, that is going to come up. Very worthwhile going through each of those. Finally, I've included a quite a big playlist of topics that I've identified with lots of extra questions. These to give you a bit more extra practice of those topics. So if you're struggling on a particular one, then definitely worth going jumping through that and reviewing that material. OK, so let's get let's get cracking on this then. So the advanced information is broken down into the six mathematical strands, number, ratio, algebra, geometry, probability and statistics. And I'm going to go through each one and identify the topics and talk a little bit about them. First up, let's have a look at the number strand. And the first topic identified is fraction arithmetic. So can you add, subtract, multiply and divide fractions and mixed numbers? Uh, I hope you can, because that's definitely going to be tested in this paper. Next, we've got decimal arithmetic. Now, I had a quick count of all the different topics uh, identified by OCR on this paper, and it was pretty much close to 50. Now, OCR papers never have more than 20 questions on them. So clearly, there are more topics identified than there are going to be questions on the paper. And I think decimal arithmetic will not be a question in itself. It's just going to be one of the questions. You're going to have to uh, either add or multiply some decimal numbers together. OK, uh, so as long as you know how to do that, uh, then you're good. I will link a decimal arithmetic question below. But uh, as I say, I really much doubt if this is going to be the, you know, the main focus of the question. Next, we've got types of numbers. So, uh, you know, squares, cubes, primes, triangle numbers, things like that. OK, um, can you identify them from a list? Can, uh, can you reel them off? Factors and multiples. So can you find factors of numbers, multiples of numbers, highest common factors, lowest common multiples? Decimals and fractions. Again, I, you know, I really don't think this is going to be like the main focus of a question, but you, you might have to, uh, as part of the question, convert from a decimal to a fraction or a fraction to a decimal. Recurring decimals, this could very much well be a question on its own. There's quite a lot of previous OCR questions based on you know, taking a recurring decimal and rewriting it as a fraction. There's an algebraic method you can follow in order to do that. I'll link to a question like that below. Percentage calculations. So can you find the percentage of a number, a percentage increase? You know, obviously, there it will be non-calculator methods that you can need for this. Now, percentage change has been specifically mentioned, which is, um, you know, if you've been given the old and the new price, working out exactly what the percentage increase is. So make sure you know how to do that. Index notation, so knowing how to write a number in index form, um, I suppose with both positive and negative indices. Powers of integers, I think this is probably about squares and cubes. Um, we don't really, you know, if it's higher powers, we tend to use the word index. So powers, normally it's squares and cubes, and maybe square roots and cube roots. Laws of indices, so knowing how to combine numbers together with the same base, either multiplying two numbers with the same base, adding the indices, or uh, dividing them, subtracting the indices, or an index of an index, 
where you're raising an index to another power. So making sure you know how to deal with all of those. Uh, thirds and exact value calculations. This could be linked to laws of indices. You might have a fractional index, uh, which you should know is a what gives you a root or a third, and you need to be able to do exact calculations with them. Uh, it might also link to trigonometry. I think trigonometric exact values is noted later on, so it might be linked to that. So this might be a support skill for the trigonometry question. Next up, rounding. So knowing how to round a number to a, a, a given number of decimal places or significant figures. And then we've got estimation. Now this catches a lot of people out every year. Uh, you're normally given like quite a complicated looking um, calculation, but you're not meant to just do it. You're meant to round each number off to one significant figure and then do the calculation. Yeah, don't, don't get confused. Make sure you read the question. If there's words in a question, read the words. Don't just look at the pictures. Standard form representation. So can you take a number and write, rewrite it in standard form with a mantissa between a 1 and 9.999 and a power of 10 and exponent? And can you do standard form calculations? So if you've got two numbers in standard form, can you multiply them? Can you add them? Yeah, so quite a lot of topics on, on number, which is probably what you might expect for the non-calculator paper because they're going to be testing all of those kind of non-calculator numbery skills. A much shorter list for our next strand, which is ratio. First up, simplifying ratio. So taking a ratio and rewriting it in the smallest possible numbers. Ratios cancel down very much the same way as fractions. So if you can cancel down a fraction, you should be able to cancel down a ratio in the same way. Use ratios. Ratio questions, oof, they, they are the bane of students' life. Lots and lots of different styles of ratio questions. I have got quite an in-depth video on looking at lots and lots of different um, question types. I um, advise you to go and look at those if you struggle with this topic. Inverse proportion, on the other hand, usually very, very straightforward, very formulaic questions. Once you know how to do them, you, there'll be no surprises for you. You just need to kind of form a basic equation, don't you, using that little proportion symbol and then replace it with equals K and then work out the value of K. Okay, uh, linked, linked example below. Moving on to algebra and again, another big, big strand here. Lots and lots of skills listed under algebra. Firstly, simplifying algebraic expressions, so kind of collecting like terms, removing brackets. Formulate algebraic expressions, so if you're given like a written description of a problem or perhaps a geometric shape, can you create a algebraic expression or equation uh, and then you might be expected to go on and solve it. Multiplying out brackets, so if you've got a double bracket or a single bracket, can you multiply it out to remove those brackets to simplify your your expression. Rearranging formula. So if you've got a formula in terms of y, can you rewrite it in terms of x? Substitute values into expressions. So once you know the values of your unknowns and you sub them in, can you work out the value of, of those actual uh, expressions? Again, that's probably a support skill for one of the other questions. I can't imagine there'll be a question specifically on substitution, but I can imagine it cropping up a lot in other questions. Use of brackets, again, I don't think there'll be a particular question on use of brackets, but I do think it will crop up perhaps in the formulating algebraic expressions question uh, where you have to, you know, you might have to use brackets and make sure you put them in the right place when you write your 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 maths down. Using kinematics formulae, these are the distance, speed, time formula. There are some more advanced kinematics formula, but if you are expected to use those, they'll give them to you and, and it will be more of a substitution question. So perhaps it's linked to the substitute uh, values into expressions uh, skill we just talked about. Quadratic equations. So AX squared plus BX plus C, you might have to factorize them. You might have to solve them. You might be have, to have to find roots or turning points. Uh, you might have to sketch them. All that quadratic -y fun. Finding approximate solutions by iteration. Now, this is quite an odd one. I've not really seen this on the non-calculated paper before. It's a very much an OCR topic, and um, usually you you use your calculator to hunt for for values closest to the solution you're looking for, or looking for sign changes and things like that. Uh, I'll link to a, a, a kind of a calculated version of the question, but remember this is the non-calculated paper, so perhaps 
the question will just be a little bit easier or the maths involved will be a little bit easier but it will be using the same techniques. Equations of circles. So knowing that x squared plus y squared equals r squared where r is the radius of your circle centered on the origin. Now I've noticed some other skills lower down the list that might, might link into this one. I'll come to those in a minute. Drawing and interpreting graphs, it could be the circle one we just talked about or it could be the quadratic that we just talked about. So make sure you know how to draw a circle and a quadratic from its equation. Uh, they would be my two best guesses of what one you might have to draw. Distance speed time graph, so either a distance time graph or a speed time graph or both. Okay, linking up um, above with the use of kinematics formulas. If it's a distance time graph, you might be expected to calculate speed from it, or if it's a speed time graph, you might have to go on and find the area under the, under the graph and therefore the distance traveled, or you might, might have to find the gradient to find the acceleration. Okay, parallel and perpendicular lines and finding the equation of a line. Now I think these two may well be linked to the equations of a circle question. You often have to find the equation of a tangent to a circle uh, at a given point. So my feeling is that those three things are going to be linked. So, you know, finding the equation of a tangent to a circle. So that, that uses all of those skills. On to the geometry section. Uh, now the first skill is units of speed, distance and time. So clearly this is going to link into the kinematics equations we were talking about and the speed time or the distance time graph. Okay. Next up, transformations. It could be it could be a rotation, could be a translation, could be a reflection, could be an enlargement. Often the OCR papers have two or even three of those skills in one question. So expect to be fully um, fully tested on all the all the different types of transformations. Construct loci, make sure you've got your compass with you. Constructing loci is like um, perpendicular bisectors, angle bisectors, circles. Normally you have to kind of draw various constructions on your diagram and kind of work out which area that they're talking about. Okay, could well link into the next skill, maps, bearings and scale drawing. Often these two things go together. It'd be rare to have two separate questions on the paper for these, these sort of things. So probably they are combined into one question. So you might have to construct uh, a loci and, you know, draw it, measure things on it, uh, you know, using a, a given scale, which is my kind of reading of those two things. I think they'll be together. Circumference of a circle and length of an arc. So circumference of a circle is pi d. Length of an arc is a fraction of pi d, isn't it? Whatever the angle is at the center over 360 times pi d is going to be your length of your arc. Area of a rectangle. Well, I really don't think there's going to be an area of a rectangle question, but uh, on its own, but it could could well be part of the, you know, the speed time graph one. Uh, so, you know, maybe finding the area under the speed time uh, graph to work out distance traveled that would that would involve calculating the area of a rectangle or it could form uh, it could be in with the forming and solving equations question so you might be given algebraic sides and asked to find the area uh, that might link in with the use of brackets as well that they're talking about so if you had two algebraic sides and you'd have to multiply them together wouldn't you to find the area so you'd need to know how to use brackets so that could tie in so it could be something like that trigonometry and exact trigonometric uh, ratios so we talked about use of surds didn't we in the number for section so that's probably linked to this so knowing about your exact trigonometric values and being able to manipulate surds to tidy things up and, and and come up with an answer in its simplest form and next up relative frequency relative frequency is kind of experimental probability isn't it so rather than theoretically working out a number of equally likely outcomes and you're actually carrying out a trial a number of times and counting the successes and relative frequency is just successful outcomes divided by total outcomes so yeah, there might often little stories around there here that you might have to kind of read through and understand, maybe a table to fill out, uh, maybe a little spinner or something, I don't know. Equally likely outcomes and probability. Okay, so equally likely outcomes could, could well be like rolling the dice, something like that. Um, 
you know you've got six equally likely outcomes when when you roll a dice so something where you've got multiple outcomes that all all have the same chance of success and maybe grouping those together somehow and working out probability of maybe you know even numbers or prime numbers on your dice face something like that or a spinner venn diagrams and sets uh so know now to draw a venn diagram yeah, so sometimes they give you numbers that you need to populate on the, on the Venn diagram first and then go on to answer some probability questions on it. And the next question, conditional probability, that is the type of probability they like to ask, ask about Venn diagrams. Conditional probability is the sorts of probability where you, uh, you work out probability of something happening given that something else has already happened. And Venn diagrams do lend themselves rather well to imagining that and coming up with the answer. I will link to a Venn diagram related conditional probability question below uh, so you get to get to know what I'm talking about. Finally, we've got the statistics strand and first up is graphical misrepresentation. Now this is often where they give you a chart or a graph and there's something weird about it which means that the, the data is distorted in some way. Uh, usually one section is overstated so the, the graph gives a misleading view of the data. Okay, so it could be that you know it's it's a histogram, but they haven't they haven't done the it should be a histogram, but they haven't done the bars wide enough or something like that. Okay, an example link below. Next, we've got pie chart. Now, I have never ever seen a pie chart question in the in the higher tier paper. Now, I tell a lie, I found one example. Now, it was on a paper that I haven't actually done a, a walkthrough. Uh, for weirdly because I've done most of them but this one I hadn't done uh, so this is this is the question that I found and you can see it's an example of graphical misrepresentation so here uh, the question is what why is this diagram misleading if you have a look at the street section then you can see it's meant to be a quarter but if you have a look at the angle at the center it's more like a third of the circle isn't it it's a lot bigger and that's the, the reason for that is that the the pie is kind of tilted and the street one is facing towards you so it ends up being distorted by um, perspective doesn't it so it ends up being bigger than it possibly should be okay so my feeling is that pie chart will be the basis of the graphical misrepresentation question i don't i don't think you're gonna have to draw a pie chart or anything like that i've never seen a question like that on, uh, on the higher tier paper it's, it's more of a, a foundation um, tier skill I do think it will be a question like this one where you have to kind of say this pie chart is weird because of this reason. OK, finally, line graph and time series. My feeling it's going to be a time series question, especially because we've had reference to time units and things like that. So I've included a an example. OK, and that's it. So a quick, quick zip through all the different topics. Uh, don't forget to go through the questions below. That's a really important bit. Me yabbering on is one thing, but you actually see in an example of the, th of the type of question I think is going to come up, um, you know, that's going to be the valuable thing. If you discover a, a topic that you do need extra help on, don't forget to look through the playlist of topics that are coming up on this paper. So I've made a playlist for each paper. So if you're preparing for paper two, go through the paper two playlist. It's got all the topics on there that uh, I think are going to come up. Just pick out the ones that you that you feel like you need to do extra practice on. OK, good luck in your preparations, guys. I'll see you on paper three um, within a few days. All right. Catch you later. Don't forget that the best revision for these exams is to go through all the past papers from previous years. The advanced information really doesn't change that. Here's a link to all the past paper walkthroughs I've done. Uh, there, there's a link below each video where you can download the paper. If you work through all of those before your final exams, there will be really few surprises for you on the day. Good luck and see you on the next video.